Hey, it's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop right here in San Diego. And today I want to talk about competition shooting. Now, many of you know that I've been around this game and been around competition shooting since 1983. That's like 35 years ago. Amazing. I don't feel like I'm that old. But uh, bottom line is, a lot has happened in competition shooting. And... Um, uh, the gear has gotten better, and uh, the shooters have gotten better, and the uh, guns have gotten better. Of course, the Glock is a big thing in competition shooting because it's a great platform on which to race and to run. And it's actually a very uh, practical gun to, uh, to practice with in these competition matches. As my business has gotten bigger, uh, we've joined more and more with competition shooting, and my son, Lenny, has actually gotten really involved in competition shooting. He's actually doing pretty well. So I decided, well, gee, I should really maybe get a little bit more into it myself because, you know, kind of, you know, as I built the business, I kind of don't shoot as much as I really want to. But now that he's shooting, uh, it's a lot more fun. Uh, the challenge is that he's beating me. <laughs> but, hey, that's a good thing, right? Uh, I'm a proud father. Uh, but today I want to talk about a, a holster, a, a race-ready holster that I think uh, uh, is really ideally suited for competition shooting. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, um, Many of you know this already, but if you don't, I'm going to go ahead and take it from the beginning. The competition holsters, or any holster that's really going to be good, is going to consist of two different belts or platforms. And notice how rigid it is. <clears throat> this is the inner belt. So you're going to see that there's the soft side of Velcro on the outside, and then there's your hook on the inside. The inner belt is the platform on which the outer belt, which I'll show you in just a bit, that holds the holster and the magazine pouches, rests as well as uh, stabilizes. So what the trick is with the inner belt is we loop this through our belt loops so that it's stable and it keeps the gun and the holster and the mag pouches and the belt, everything in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on and I'll show you the trick about the inner belt, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and put it here. Now, one of the things you'll notice as I close it up, it's gonna double up on itself right here. Now, when I put the outer belt on, there'll be another layer on top here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this back around to the back side of my back, all the way back to the middle of my back. A little bit more comfortable. And now I have just one layer here. And you'll see why once we get to the other belt. So that's the inner belt. Notice how it's through my belt loops. So now I've got a secure platform on which to mount the outer belt. Now, again, this is the outer belt. Now, I've already got the uh, magazine pouches installed. And we do offer these in a variety of different ways. You can buy the pouches separately. You can buy the holster separately. Or you can buy the entire rig by itself. Of course, you can buy the belt separately as well. So the belt comes with the inner belt. So when you buy the outer belt, it comes with the inner belt. So when you buy the belt, it comes with the belt. Uh, that being said, uh, uh, I do want you to notice how rigid it is. Okay, it's designed to support the weight of the magazines with ammunition as well as the weight of the gun. Uh, the magazine pouches are adjustable in a couple of different ways. They can be tilted Put a little Allen, Allen wrench in here and loosen the screw, and they can be tilted to your preference as to where you want it to sit. You can take this thing all the way down to horizontal if you want to put a horizontal one on there. They slide on the belt. They do slide around, and they come with a uh, Velcro uh, tape on the back that will actually stick to the inner belt. So once you get it all set up and you have everything where you want it to be, then you actually can stick everything onto this outer belt. And so you're kind of getting the concept, right? So now that we have this thing set up for where we want everything to be. When you put it on, the Velcro, the hook, interacts with the loop, and it puts it right onto your body so it doesn't move as you run, as you draw the holster, as you draw magazines. It doesn't shift around. It doesn't come up and down. It's a real stable platform. So we talked about the magazine holder. It also has a tension device, which will hold it and allow you to keep the magazine in there tighter. So if I wanted to lock it down, I'd just lock it up and it would be a little bit harder to get out. Go ahead and take it out just a little bit and out it comes. So that's a neat feature as well. Um, like I said, there, we set it up with four because that's typically what you're going to want in a competition match, at least four magazines. 
Sometimes you shoot a lot of rounds. Sometimes you just need that extra magazine. Sometimes you make a mistake and you drop one. You need to, need to have a spare. So, all right. So there's your outer belt. The holster itself, same concept. It attaches to the belt with uh, these uh, Allen screws right here. Basically, just open those up. And it's like, I think it's a torque screw. And uh, clamp this on here and get it set. And it's going to kind of bite in place. So you really want to know where you have that. So the way we set this up is once you get it all kind of preloaded, you always want to have a spot that you feel you want the gun to ride. And we'll put that on first. So if I want the gun to be there and here, and there we have it. Now, it doesn't play that much up and down, right? So it gives it a good stable platform on which to live. Now, you're going to notice, too, because I overlap these two, that I've got two layers, and there's a third layer. If I didn't roll that belt around to the back, I'd have a fourth layer to get really kind of fat out here. So I feel it's, it's a nice feature to, uh, or a nice option is to, to do exactly what I did with that inner belt so it's a little bit more comfortable for you. All right, here's uh, Glock 34, my little race gun that I like to play with fits in the holster. Now, again, everybody sets the holster up to where they feel most comfortable. The comfort level is that when you come up to draw, your hand actually can get to it. Or when you come down, where does your hand actually drop without having to adjust it or move it? You don't want it to be too far forward. You don't want it to be too far back. You want to make it fit for you. So it's really just a matter of your preference, what feels best for you. Can you get onto the gun and get it out as, uh, as you desire uh, without thinking about it. And it takes practice, of course. This also has retention screws. So if you wanted to lock this down, say you're just at lunchtime, you don't, hey, I don't want my gun to fall out no matter what, I'm gonna lock it down. Now the gun's not coming out. Get to the match, get it out, make sure it's loose, comes up as you want, maybe you might even a bit looser, and now you can come up and get the gun out as you want. So let's talk about some uh, drawing techniques now for competition, just to kind of review. Just in case, uh, you know, you're thinking about shooting and you want to get a head start on it. Uh, competition shooting is a lot of fun, you know, first of all. It's good practice. really gets you uh, a, uh, a lot of trigger time, a lot of shots, and it shows you, you know, where your weaknesses are. Uh, you can go as fast as you want or as slow as you want. It's all about really you competing against yourself. Uh, typically, when we go out to shoot, it's a nice, friendly crowd. Everybody's encouraging you to do well because they're not really shooting against you. They're shooting against themselves. If they do well, then hey, that's good. If they, they do better than they did the last time, they're successful. Of course, everybody wants to win, but they don't want to win by having you lose. They want to win because they shot well. So I think that's a, a real nice thing about the competition shooting. Now for drawing, uh, typically in competition shooting, you have two different uh, techniques. Hands above, hands down below. Hands down below, you know, they don't want you to cheat. They don't want you to be here. You know, so your hands have to be dangling typically at your sides. The technique that most competition shooters are using, and uh, which makes sense, it's really um, uh, economy is a speed of motion, okay? So our speed is the economy of motion, you know? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, minimize the movement and maximize our speed to the target. So uh, the typical thing you're gonna wanna see most people do is they're gonna come up, they're gonna access the gun, and they're gonna take this left hand or off hand, and they're gonna present it to the target or present it up here so that when they come with the gun, they're able to intersect and get on target really good. What you don't want to do is have that hand down here and then come up and do that. I mean, you can, certainly, you know, but what we're trying to do is minimize that tenth of a second to catch up there. So one of the things I see a lot of competition shooters do, and something you'll you know, notice, is come up, so bump, and, and then, of course, just practice and get your speed guns and, you know, be able to access the gun every time. And I will tell you that the guys who shoot a lot, who are really serious, do that thousands and thousands of times every week <laughs> before they get to the range, just so they're super comfortable and they're super, uh, super competent and capable of getting up on target fast. Because that first shot, you know, that's where you can save yourself a couple tenths of a second, which makes a big difference. Um, the... Magazines, uh, most people are going to be using a, um, a magazine with an extension. Of course, in California, there's a 10-round limit, but throughout the rest of the country, uh, you're able to uh, use the plus extensions. And this happens to be the double diamond plus extension that we sell here uh, that offers uh, for 9 millimeter six extra rounds. 
So your 17 round magazine turns into a 23 rounder. And of course, 40 caliber is five extra rounds. Uh, the uh, magazines go into the magazine holders facing forward. And there's a reason for that. And you probably know right now, just thinking about it. Uh, here's another version of this uh, uh, Double Diamond Plus 6 magazine in 9mm. Has uh, interchangeable base plates. I just want to show you that really cool, uh, really quickly, because they're very cool. They're attractive. Uh, it also helps you identify your magazines at the range. Uh, certainly, and uh, if you, you know, we have different color base plates, you can always uh, mix and match, but you know, know which one is which. Uh, it's always a good idea. A lot of competition shooters like to number their magazines or some come, up, some come up with some kind of marking system. So that if you see that there's a problem with an existing magazine on a regular basis, uh, you know which magazine it is. They don't all look alike or they, do, they have different markings so that at some point in time you can say to yourself, well, I always get a jam with that magazine. There's something wrong with it, whether it's dirty, whether it's the follower's not good, the spring's not good. Uh, bottom line is it's, it's, it's causing issues, so I need to address that or at least uh, not use it in a competition. So. All right, so the magazines, like I said, are, are facing bullet forward, like so. And again, what happens is when you're here and you're shooting, when you go to reload, you drop your mag, see how your hand drops down right onto the magazine with a finger? So again, you're coming down, finger, up, and you see what's happening now. As soon as I go to reload, I've already got it preloaded in the right direction. So we don't want to put our magazines in backwards because that's going to be a problem. They go in like so, and they really only fit one way. And there's a reason for that because you want to be able to do so. Now for the reload, I'm just going to review a little bit of technique, which I've seen a lot of the top shooters do over the course of my 35 years. Uh, basically, when we're up here like so, you're shooting and it's time to reload. We're bringing the magazine back up to your face. So we don't want to be down here. We want to be up around here, your face. We want to almost visually see that hole and come up and go. A couple things happen there. One, um, you're much more, you have much more dexterity, much more control of your, of your hands and, and your, your, um, uh, your dexterity when you are here close, okay, up here. Down here, you lose it a little bit. Just that's the way it is. So when you're coming up here, it's always nice to be up here and then. Now you're much closer to bringing the gun back to action versus down here, because then you gotta come back up. So a lot of the top shooters you'll see will run with the gun always up top. They won't even put it down here. They're gonna run, they're gonna be, they're, the gun's always ready when they're, when they're going from stage to stage, or the gun is high, at the high ready. They do not want to drop the gun or bring it down here at all, because then you gotta bring it back up, and they may lose that extra tenth of a second, which is a big deal when you're at the top of the competition circles. It's a game of tenths of a second and, uh, and one or two points. So again, here, they drop the magazine. I don't want it to hit, let it hit the ground. Come up with the other one, reload close and go back out. So just a little bit about competition shooting. This would be my competition gun. It's got a uh, big mouth uh, magazine well on it. Uh, it's got our pyramid trigger in it. Uh, it's got our extended controls. Uh, just love this gun, shoots great. I have a lot of fun with it. Competition shooting is a ton of fun. I encourage you to get involved. It's actually you know, something that you can do on a Saturday just about anywhere in the country. There's a match somewhere being held. Uh, certainly, you know, look online, go find a match if you wanna shoot. Most people, when you go out there, they're pleasantly surprised how nice everybody is. And I will tell you this, at, at our local match up here in, in San Diego County, uh, there's a mixture of really good shooters, of guys who've been there for a while and who are, are good shooters. You know, you've got your competition top guys. And then there's always some new people who, you know, like their first or second match. And we have fun with them just as much. And, you know, the key to that is, is that they go out and they shoot just a little better than they did the last time. And they get better and better and better. And you can see the look on their face as they enjoy it, as they see that, wow, it's not that hard to do. Uh, it's certainly better than golf, faster than golf, easier than golf. And, uh, and there's a practical application behind it. If you're interested in self-defense and interested in shooting, uh, this competition shooting does allow you to gain some practical skill that could come into play should you need to use a firearm for self-defense. I'm Lenny McGill. This, of course, is the uh, Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop here in San Diego. If you want to shoot competition, we do give classes here as well. So a lot of people in San Diego County are coming down to actually, you know, work with some of our guys in some of our rooms to get to the point where they feel comfortable enough to go to the match. So I do invite you to come down. Of course, we have all the gear here for you to try out and test. And of course, we've got it online as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.